Now, with looking at Islam as a way of life, important to touch on the five pillars of Islam. The first is the declaration of faith. There is no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. The second, daily prayer. This is what most people are familiar with, that Muslims have to, five times each day, stop and perform their daily prayers. And what I have here, this is a prayer rug, right? This was brought back from Iraq by one of our servicemen, given to me. Very thankful to have it. Now, when we look at the, the prayer rug, this is, this is what is used, and it has the outline of a mosque. If, if you look at the shape here, right, it has the outline of a mosque. So by kneeling down on the, the prayer rug, right, and saying your prayers, you can't be in mosque, but you can be inside the, the shape of the mosque. There's some symbolism there. And what I like about this, this prayer rug is you can hopefully see it's the indentations and how much it's been used. Really, really, really neat. It's in my office if you want to ever stop by and take a look at it. In addition to the declaration of faith and daily, daily prayer is almsgiving, right? You have to give to the poor. Fasting during Ramadan. Ramadan is regarded as a sacred month. From sunrise to sundown, there's no eating, there's no drinking, and you can't have sex. And you also have to avoid arguing and negative thoughts. Then the fifth pillar is the pilgrimage to Mecca. This was called the Hajj. And there's different ritual acts that people go through, including the visit to the Kaaba. And this was the cube built by Abraham and Ishmael, Ishmael for Allah. Now, a uh, difference between Islam and Judaism, and right, people, if you've read through the Tanakh, you might be familiar with Ishmael, right? That was the firstborn son of Abraham, but was born from a slave, a servant, right? Then there was Isaac, right, with this, the sacrificing of Isaac. In the Quran, it's Is Ishmael instead of Isaac. A little, little difference there. This is a picture here of the pilgrimage, and inside is the Kaaba, and they're circling round and round, and each step you get closer and closer to it. Right, just an amazing spectacle. And this is in Saudi Arabia. For worship, worship takes place inside of a mosque. There's ritual cleansing. You have to remove your shoes, and they're separated by gender, so you can concentrate during the worship service, and it's led by an imam. It'd be the, the equivalent of a pastor in Christianity or a rabbi in Judaism. So, marriage... Then, dietary restrictions. Now, these are similar to Judaism. The animal must be slaughtered while mentioning the name of God by a Muslim, and it cannot suffer. It has to be drained of blood, and just like I mentioned a second ago, no pork, no alcohol. Now, according to the Quran, it's supposed to dress modestly. And this is interpreted in, in different ways. For example, this is the hijab, some different ways that interpreted with the idea of modest dress. So, what is our ultimate purpose? We aim to live righteous lives by submitting to the will of God, adhering to the five pillars of Islam, following the example of the prophet Muhammad, read scripture. Important to remember, 
that God will judge each person individually. And those who have lived righteously will enter paradise. And those who have lived sinful lives will be cast into the fire. So, I've hoped everyone has enjoyed our brief overview of Islam. So, until next time, be well, do good work, and keep in touch.